dumpster fire runs, it drives, it smokes. Let's find out what happens when we go to a car show with a Dodge Daytona. Or at least a car that looks like a Dodge Daytona from about 30 yards away. From 30 feet, I figure people are going to figure this out immediately. She might not be the prettiest. But she's got a big wing, big tires, big velocity stacks. And a fake fiberglass nose and a fake fiberglass wing. What's not to like? What car be you scared of? Yeah. Why you kill a lot of them? I did not know it, Dad. Nice. Finnegan's Garage, thanks for hanging out as always. Today we're road tripping Dumpster Fire Daytona to my local Caffeine and Octane car cruise because this is my first local road trip. History of this car, for those of you that don't know. Bought it last summer in Pontiac, Michigan at Roadkill Nights. Hauled it home in the Roadkill ramp truck. And then as soon as I got home, I had a plan. I had all these used parts laying around from Blasphemy, the death metal charger, uh, I, I had an engine, I had used trans, I had all, I had a rear end. I had all this stuff and I thought, I'm putting all that stuff in this car. Because this car is probably the most holy fake Dodge Daytona I've ever seen. And I don't mean religious, I mean legit. Every inch of this car is rusty all the way through. And so, you know, from 30 feet, people lose their minds. It looks like a Dodge Daytona, but when you get to 29 feet, you realize, uh, it's not real and it's pretty trashy, <laughs> which is probably what I like about it. I, I don't know what it is with me, but I like finding the worst possible version of my favorite car, throwing it together with my friends, and then just making memories with it, you know? I don't, I don't usually restore stuff, I just don't. Uh, so that's what we did. We did two episodes of Roadkill that are about to come out. The first one you'll see is Dulcich, Freiburger, and I, and Joe Cole getting this thing running in just five days. And then the next episode of Roadkill you'll see on the Motor Trend app is us road tripping this thing back to Roadkill Nights, where it all began for me, where I first saw this car. And so now it's together, it runs, it drives. I figure, let's go to Caffeine and Octane, my local cruise, and find out what people think about my Daytona. I'm not kidding about this thing being trashy. Like, uh, I don't, I don't really know the history of the car, but. Uh, None of the panels really align. Um, that's a uh, rubber floor mat from the parts store that is covering the hole in the floor. You can poke your finger through the rocker panels, the doors, the fenders, um, you know, top and bottom. She's well ventilated. She is on the diet. The rust is lighter than carbon fiber diet for sure. You know, this thing, I'll probably show you the most offensive area, which is my favorite part of the car. Let me get the keys here so I can show you. Um, you know, the wing is my favorite part of the car. And those of you at home that know anything about these cars know that this is the first giveaway that it's not a real Daytona. And no, it's not the rust hole back there. Those come factory with all Dodge Chargers. Um, no, it should have had an aerodynamic back glass and a shorter deck lid if it was a real Dodge Daytona, and it does not have that. But what it does have is the factory lightweight quarter panel option here, which is incredible. Like, this is one of the most ventilated and yet street legal roadworthy fake Dodge Daytonas I've, I've ever seen. And uh, I can get the trunk open here for you. Let me see here. Remember which, never remember which key it is. I just know it goes in upside down because Dodge product. All right, here we go. This gives you a better look at how hacked up this car is. That is a piece of diamond tread upside down under the quarter panel, giving the wing something to bolt to. And then 
you know, this is an old school Pro Street build that I don't think was ever actually finished, and I don't think it ever saw the road. You know, there were there were dead giveaways during the roadkill episode of this car, not actually ever seeing the road. And one of them was that underneath the car, the backbone of where the square two back half was located was a cross member that didn't allow you to install a drive shaft. Like the cross member was just in the way, we had to cut it out. And so, you know, we did what we could given the time we had to make this thing work, you know, and um, it's not great. I just like the way it looks. Like if you look at this car underneath, beyond the rust, it's got a complete flex pipe exhaust system. You know, that was one of those last minute cut corners, get it done kind of deals. So yeah, that is all flex tubing. And it has, you know, pretty much a motorhome 383 big block. That sounds like it's got a hole in the muffler. But this is all stuff that came out of my other project cars. You know, that's the motor out of the death metal charger, the one that I 2JZ swapped. The rear end came out of my Rubber Duck 67 Firebird. You know, it's bent. The Trans is a G-Force five-speed that came out of blasphemy. This is as economical a way as I could throw this car together and then go cruise it. So as you can see, we decided to take two of the primest cars in the Finnegan fleet. <laughs> uh, this Death metal charger right. and the dumpster fire. It's getting cleaned out from all the crap left over from Roadkill Nights. I mean, there was goodies left inside the doors, everything. Put on the egg. Oh, I just threw it away. Threw it away? Yeah, I think it might still be in here. Joe found a rotten egg. A rotten egg from a, a egg fight on the road on the way to Roadkill Nights. Yeah, I lost that one egg. Joe just found it like a month later. <laughs> I was driving over here going, I don't like the stance of this car. The nose is too high. No problem. It's a Mopar. We'll just crawl under it, turn the torsion bar adjuster down, lower it instantly. Oh, did we forget we put all QA1 suspension on it? Forgot. There's no torsion bars anymore. <laughs> so it takes a spanner wrench now and uh, a little bit of blood, a little bit of cussing. But yeah, does, what? You got a little bit of blood on your cheek there, buddy. It does ride better than it used to. It does, oh, I bet. It does stop a lot better than it used to, so... I'll take the not so ease of adjustment penalty. Do you ever sit back and just marvel at the fact that the most reliable car in the fleet is a Dodge with a Toyota motor in it? Of course, it's a Toyota, dude. And this motor's probably got what, like 300,000 miles on it? I don't know, but. The and then, time and then I've, crammed a turbo on it? The entire time I've owned it, it's just been on the rev limiter, so. <laughs> oh. You have not been kind to it. So that's like half mileage then. I uh, put the most effort into the rusty ones. <laughs> this one's been 2J swapped, full QA1 front end, all new disc brakes, nine inch rear end with two sets of calipers. Like, put a lot of work into this one. It's probably why it's the most reliable. All right, let's check the stance. That's better. For that side. Yeah. The other side needs to go down a little more. 
Oh, that's the other side. I know these fenders are flared precisionly. Precisionly? Yeah. Precisionly. That's a word. <laughs> it is now. I think you just made it one. Okay. Yeah, we need to go back up to this side, turn the wheel left, I'll crawl under it, and lower this side a little more. Okay. Do we have any suspension travel left on this side? <laughs> oh, yeah. Note these safety spectacles, but also lack of jack stand. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be under here this long. It's okay. It's a good Harbor Freight jack, so we're okay. It's the jacks are okay. It's the jack stand that's the the problem, right? Then they have one that was sketchy. They recalled a whole bunch of them. So you put all this nice new fancy QA1 stuff on here. Has it even seen the dirt since? Because um, it doesn't look like that stuff has ever been gotten dirty. No, it has not been to the dirt. But I know a guy who let some guys build a dirt track, perfect for muscle cars. About, yes, about five hours from here. All right. I have a feeling we'll have to be going the other way with those though, when we do that. It's a pretty smooth track, actually. Is it? Yeah. There is one bump. <laughs> was that meant to be? Or was it a bump slash jump? It was a jump that turned into a bump. Oh. Huh. Side's still high. Maybe bounce it a little bit. Maybe it'll get better as we drive. Huh? It's still a little high on this side. Of course. <laughs> maybe they'll... It's a precisionly wait. cut <laughs> Precisionly. Maybe that's the thing. It's the precisionly is awful. I mean, the nose of the you car... Know, I would say you could measure the bumper. It's a little low. But oh, that's there's probably not going to help. There's nothing to measure. It's literally... <laughs> when Tony and I put... So the front end of this car was bent, right? The uh -huh. farmer cut all the inner fenders out and um these mopars have sheet metal frame rails basically that stop just past the firewall right when you cut all the inner fenders out these things bend so they were bent so tony and i jacked up both of them and added these bars to the firewall to straighten it out and there's no reference point anywhere on this car for what's level or what's straight <laughs> you know other than that and uh I don't know, I feel it. it looks better i'm happy with it one day, I'm gonna put a complete new roll cage in it. And when I do that, I'm gonna cut all the floors out, body drop the thing, and then weld the floors back in so the car can be really low but still have suspension travel. That's my plan. Someday. Someday. Not tomorrow, tomorrow's Sunday. We're going to Caffeine and Octane. We're gonna find out what people think of, not this car, because we already did that, this car. We're going to find out what the people think of uh, what is arguably, in my estimation, the worst fake Dodge Daytona ever. Come on, really? It's very bad. She runs great, though. The floor mats cover up the Flintstone part where your feet go through the floor. I'm about to attempt all the extra rust out of it, just make it that much lighter. <laughs> Every time you drive it, it gets lighter. Yeah. And would you believe without the cardboard ducting, this thing overheats? 100% goes 260 degrees unless you duct so all, all the air to the radiator. Well, then again, the last time we drove this, it was pretty hot. Weather's a lot different right now. It's perfect for car cruising.
first man tape. I mean, a good bit of duct tape can save anything off. How about batteries held in? It doesn't matter if it has the screw. Oh, it still has the, uh, the cardboard air ducts. <laughs> Yeah, the rust. Yeah, the rust in the front. Greg is just sharpening along the course. You're not as cool. Shut up. Dude, this thing is so ridiculous and so stupid. Does it run? This? Oh, he just drove it in here. With no headlights? Yeah, come on, you don't need those. It's daytime. Yeah, it's daytime. Race cars don't need headlights. Track is always lit. Oh, uh, <laughs> That's what you should do in your life. Yeah. You see a radiator strap. Why could It's so good. You know what that probably is? It's probably like mocking it up. Do you think this started life as a real road runner, or do you think it's going to just cobble together? This was part of my life. We had this car. We had it. What? Oh, I did not know that. That is sick. But this was at Dirtfish. And this one is at, uh, they didn't take, I think they didn't take this to the uh, street drag race that Rokefield has. It's a 440. 420, you know, it's faster 426 Hemi. Got spark plugs that go through the center of Alco. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Bad to the bone. Yeah. Now that's a monster. Yeah. But that's that that's great. still a. And that's a monster as well. Even bigger monster. Ooh, and here's these little cardboard thingies on here. But these are BS. Of course it does. How can you not with this color? I remember not going to go to the house and just stand here all night. Just <laughs> Oh man. Like he had uh, 
everything already before I hit the car. You know, and dropped it into it. So that looks awesome, I said. Oh my god, dude, this guy's my hero, bro. It's cardboard and everything. It's my jukebox hero. I think one of them tubas. Yeah. <laughs> I love the cardboard Oh, yeah. Is that actually bolted in? It's zip that it must have leaked. <laughs> Like a new way. 